Alright, welcome to the last video of this mini series about time, about uh, project estimating. And on this video, I'm going to talk about time boxes. So, time box estimating is a little bit different because normally we start with planning the scope of the project and then we go into schedule. But time boxes start by planning the schedule first. Okay. Um, I spoke about this in a previous video, but uh, basically, this I just want to make use of this tool called the time boxes to better explain how we can use them in emergencies. Okay. So this time box is based upon two things. All right. First, I'm going to calculate what available resources I have, and then I'm going to estimate the work that can be done, the scope that can be done based on how much time available do I have. So normally we use this technique for urgent projects, and that can mean one of two things. Either you have a very limited time to act or the end point, the end point of this project. And when I mean end point, I mean the work that must be done, the, the, the scope is flexible or is constantly changing. So to create time box estimates, there's a, a process we go through. First, we determine what is the time window that we have, when we start and then when, when we have to finish. So we start with the first we set what is the start point, then we set what is the end point. Okay? Then we divide this time into the necessary phases of the project, into the necessary parts of the project. Then we estimate what can be done within the time period that we have in each phase. So I know that I only have one week to work on this phase. What can I do in terms of scope during this week? So the scope delivery acceptance criteria will stay undefined during the whole project because you cannot predict what will be accomplished by the very end of this time. You have some ideas, but you cannot put it in such a manner that you can be evaluated on it. So time, uh, time boxes don't use this kind of tool. We don't have to make this list. So the scope here will be variable and during the project, the scope will change a lot. But what is not variable is the time, the schedule and the budget of the project. A couple of tips about using this type of technique. Well, the team members start to work on the phase as, as soon as that time box opens. And during the time box, the team has, has freedom to redirect their activities in whatever direction they deem necessary in order to accomplish the goals of that phase. The project team the members should devote as much effort as possible on the tasks during the, the time box while the time box is actually open. And at the end of the time box, the activities stop. So at the end of the week, for example, the activities for this phase stop. Then there is uh, evaluation to see is the results we got good enough or should we work on this specific phase a little bit more time. Um, the time box estimate, therefore, will really limit the amount of effort you can spend on tasks. And this has a major advantage because you're not going to spend too much time analyzing things. Rather, you're going to spend more time actually coming up with solutions. That's it for time boxes. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's very useful indeed when it's in situations of urgency or the situations that you don't have a lot of time to solve the problem. This technique uh, is hard to apply. It's very stressful, but the results can indeed be amazing. All right. Thank you very much for watching this mini series. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, I'll see you on the next video.